me gustaría dar la bienvenida a Peter Lord. Thank you very much for Thank you. Thank you. Good evening. Hello. Lovely to see you. This is a great sight for me to see uh, a theatre full of enthusiasts. Thank you for coming. Hola, buenas tardes. Eh, bienvenidos. Eh, es un gusto para mí eh, ver esta sala llena de gente y de entusiastas de la animación. Now, I discover that I don't have as much time as I need. Okay, so um, I'll keep talking until they throw me out. That's my plan. <laughs> Básicamente me acabo de dar cuenta de que no tengo tanto tiempo como creía para hacer esta masterclass, así que yo voy a estar hablando hasta que me echen de aquí. This first slide here uh, says, it says 40 years of creativity. Um, don't feel bad when I tell you this is a somewhat recycled slide that I have used before, uh, because really that date should be, should be longer. The company Ardman has actually been in existence formally since 1976 and in reality since about 1972 so we really go back nearly 50 years ah uh, bueno aquí pone que son 40 años de creatividad no os sentáis mal en realidad son más eh, eh, la compañía formalmente se reconoce que empieza a, a operar en 1976 en realidad fue en 1974 y podemos ir a 72. I'm going to start with showing you a compilation. This is a very traditional way of starting this kind of program. Uh, and I don't want to talk about the past too much. I want to talk about the present uh, and, and indeed the, the future of our band. So as a result, um, This compilation reel will be like the only chance you'll get to see some old favourites, perhaps. Um, there'll be actually that's not true, true. but like like creature comforts. Everyone loves creature comforts, uh, but you won't see that. No, no, sorry. Uh, I'm going to show you new stuff. Bueno, voy a empezar con una compilación de trabajos anteriores, que es como se suelen empezar estas cosas. No quiero hablar tanto del pasado como quiero hablar del presente y fundamentalmente del futuro pero esta va a ser la oportunidad que tengáis de ver eh, este tipo de trabajos que de otra manera no se podrían ver. Using this powerful tool, let's see if it works. Utilizando esta herramienta más fantástica y secreta. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Good, good. <laughs> so there, 
we see the work of many hundreds, I mean probably thousands of different people have contributed to, yes, thousands of people have contributed to that. And the, there was the work of um, certainly 20 different directors in there uh, and many different styles and techniques. There was conventional stop frame animation and there was uh, CG animation in Maya. There was drawn animation. There was stuff for games, stuff for TV commercials, stuff for um, kids' series, a multiplicity of different styles and visions and uh, individuals. Put that lot together. Bueno, probablemente, bueno, aquí hemos visto el trabajo de cientos, uh, bueno, más bien miles de, de personas uh, trabajando, eh, que es lo que ha acabado siendo Orman Studios. Uh, vemos también, hemos visto diversas técnicas de la animación, del frame, uh, al stop motion tradicional, a la uh, animación con CGA, um, y hemos visto también diversos trabajos que van enfocados a una multitud de canales distintos de exhibición, como puede ser las televisión, los anuncios o uh, uh, para el público infantil. Y también diversos estilos dentro de la propia animación. And, um, and um, I, I know that most people, when they think of Arban, they think of, of Wallace and Gromit and Shaun the Sheep and Chicken Run, particularly those things. And so it's a pleasure to show that there is much more to the company than that. Uh, I'm conscious that when people think of Arman Studios, they're thinking of Wallace and Gromit, uh, La Baja Sound, and uh, Chicken on Run, but uh, it's much more. Arman Studios is much more than simply that, but I'm very complacent that people also know about their work. And the first thing I'm going to show is, is the first thing. It's the first... Um, not quite, the, not quite the first film that we ever made, but the first film we ever sold. Um, it, uh, and it's quite, it's quite significant from many points of view. Lo primero que voy a enseñar no es la primera película que hicimos, sino de hecho la primera película que vendimos. Y... Yeah. 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 And so, and so um, this, is, this, is the, uh, this is the original... Ardman cartoon from which the company name comes. So let's see this. It's the Ardman original del cual la compañía toma su nombre. A good old Ardman cartoon. Oh. Oh. Uh, so that's it. Uh, that's it. It's not very. It's not very good, is it? But uh, but it's but it's in, it's very interesting actually. That was made for a TV program called Vision On, and Vision On was was um, network broadcast in the days when there were only three terrestrial TV channels. Try to imagine, and. Um, it was a program specifically designed for, for deaf children. So it was very, very forward and, and um, a, a excellent program. Esto fue realizado para esta um, Arman, a la primera, um, primer dibujo fue realizado para un tele, una programa de televisión que se llama Vision On, uh, que era en el momento en el que solo existían tres cadenas de televisión. Y, um, yes, we can know it because we have lived the similar thing here in Spain, only with two channels, so we can imagine. Y um, era un programa que estaba dedicado para chicos sordos, con lo cual tenía que ser una, un dibujo que fuese muy expresivo plásticamente, tenía que ser muy directo. Good. And um, so it's, it, this is traditional animation. Um, back in the uh, analog days, most people, almost everybody in the world of animation, animated like this, uh, uh, better, but like this, with, with um, a series of drawings, uh, 
traced and painted and put in front of a background and then animated. Hablando de un momento en el que es, bueno, es, podemos hablar de una animación tradicional analógica y en la cual básicamente todo el mundo estaba haciendo esto y, y había gente que lo hacía mucho mejor, en tanto en cuanto el, el trazo, eh, el dibujo y el, el fondo también. That was lucky. And that, uh, okay, uh, that was the next slide. How did I do that? And that okay, this is good. Um, no, stop. Whoa, 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 whoa. That one, thank you. <laughs> I, I never touched it. Um, okay, so uh, uh, here we are. Here we are, me uh, and David Sproxton. So we met when we were at high school. We met when we were twelve, uh, and we're st and we're still partners today. And we are filming that Ardman cartoon. This here is is a sixteen millimeter Bolex camera. Estamos David Brosin y, y yo, es cuando teníamos 12 años, nos conocimos en el instituto y somos todavía compañeros de trabajo y es cuando estamos rodando el cartoon de Arman con una 16 mm Vortex. And we we made that Arman film and that Arman film that I just showed was the first um, the first time I'd ever done drawn animation and the, such information as I had came from a book, I suppose. I wasn't, I wasn't taught, um, and I, I wasn't very good at it, of course. I was only 17 years old. Este primer Arman fue el primer dibujo que él hizo y la inspiración vino de un libro. Él no tuvo, o sea, no tuvo training formal, no tuvo educación. La tuvo, pero no en animación. Uh, and because it was, well, no, no, first, sorry, I'm going to stop and say, the reason why the company name um, derives is that strange character that fell down the hole, we called him Ardman. It's not even a joke. It's not even that. Um, when we were 17, we thought that the word Ardvark was very funny. And Ardvark is, and, it's, and it still is. And, and, <laughs> An aardvark is, is a South African anteater that lives in holes. Uh, so we took the Ard of aardvark and the man of Superman and we called our superhero Ardman, even though he didn't eat ants or anything like that. In fact, he didn't do anything at all super, but that was, that was the name we chose for that film. And when the, um, the BBC uh, paid us, which was £25, they said, who should we pay it to? And we chose then the name Ardman, which still survives today. Bueno, eh, esta parte me la voy a inventar un poco. Eh, el nombre de Ardman viene de... No es una broma, ellos cuando tienen 17 años y, y crean este personaje, es una mezcla, ellos piensan ¿no? que es una mezcla entre Agbak, que es una especie de hormiguero africano, y Superman, que es el, el, el héroe. Y entonces deciden generar una mezcla entre ambas ideas y, y generan su pequeño superhéroe que es Arma. The, the, those cameras were obsolete for a while, but now they're really quite cool again, 16mm Bolex. Um, okay, so, so the next picture is, that was us then, this is us more recently with with some of the team, although not all of them. Ah, uh, bueno, las Vortex se quedaron obsoletas, 16 mm se quedaron obsoletas por un tiempo, ahora vuelven a molar. Eh, eso éramos nosotros cuando teníamos es David y yo cuando teníamos 17 años y estos somos ahora David y yo, pues este tiempo después con con el equipo. But the bigger story was that that drawn animation like our band was very difficult uh, and we weren't trained and if there was a if there was a, a a league table of animation there'd be you know there'd be Walt Disney up here and there'd be us right right down there the very worst the very worst young animators you can imagine and so we decided to move into the third dimension Vale. Eh, bueno, la cuestión que quiero, de la que quiero hablar aquí, eh, lo importante es que la animación dibujada es una técnica muy difícil. Eh, nosotros no tuvimos entrenamiento ni educación formal en animación y que eh, la línea, por decirlo así, o, o, o lo que 
en lo que nos fijábamos era Disney y evidentemente a Disney no podíamos llegar, así que nos decantamos por la animación en tres dimensiones con plastilina. And we, so we started working with modeling clay and that was, that was, that transformed our, our career. I think if we'd stayed with um, drawn animation, I don't think we would have continued because as, uh, this is, I hadn't thought about this for a while, but we weren't at that stage particularly passionate about animation. I mean, we were, it was fun and it was interesting, but it wasn't, it was not the the uh, the great goal of our lives. Uh, empezar a trabajar con animación en 3D con plastilina transformó nuestras carreras y no pienso que si hubiésemos seguido con la animación pintada hubiésemos continuado y um, de hecho la animación en 3D abrió perspectivas completamente diferentes. So we we started modeling with, animating with with plastilina modeling clay yeah. and. Uh, It was a great idea. It was a great idea. And, um, and I said that in the league table, from Walt, there was Walt Disney and there was us down the bottom. In the world of animating with plastilina, there was nobody else. The table was empty. There was only us, just, you know. And whether we were at the top or the bottom, you, you couldn't tell because it was only us. So, <laughs> so we set the standard. En la animación de, con dibujo, como he dicho antes, estaba Disney en, el, en la parte más, en la, en, la, en la escala estaba en la parte más arriba, nosotros estábamos en la escala más abajo, pero con la animación con plastilina no había nadie, así que nosotros estábamos en la escala más alta. After some time we created the character that's a bit like this, um, uh, called Morph, and Morph was a character. I say that, I, I emphasize the word, it wasn't just a little person, uh, the thing, he was a character who, who had a personality and, um, and animating to convey uh, emotion was a thing that we kind of pioneered. I mean, I'm not saying we were the first, of course I'm not, but in three dimensions I think we were pioneers. Nosotros creamos un personaje que se llama Muff y lo que queríamos crear, o sea, Muff uh, no era simplemente un personaje, o sea, es un personaje en, en tanto en cuanto tenía personalidad y tenía emociones. Y representar todas esas emociones a través de la, de la animación con plastilina en 3D era una cuestión complicada, así que mm, no vamos a decir que fuimos los primeros en hacerlo, pero sí pienso que fuimos pioneros. En... I don't know if anyone in Spain will, will know, but there was a French... TV series called The Magic Roundabout, which was, which was very popular when I, when I was uh, young. And it was puppet animation, it was stop motion animation uh, with little, little figurines and, who, and, the, and the magic world and the roundabout. The, but if you turned the sound down, you couldn't guess what was going on because, uh, because the puppets didn't express anything. They just moved around. When they, went, when they talked, They shook their heads at each other and they waved their arms. And you know, that's, that's, that's not very expressive. Bueno, no sé si la, <coughs> perdón, no sé si la conocéis, pero existía una serie de televisión francesa que se llama Magic Roundabout, que era animación en stop motion. Y si mmm, cuando lo estabas viendo bajabas el sonido y no oías el sonido, realmente no podías adivinar, perdón, no podías adivinar qué estaban sintiendo las, los personajes porque los personajes no tenían manera, o sea, eran, eran tan estáticos y tan planos, uh, y unilaterales en que no eran capaces de expresar los sentimientos. I'll, I'll show you Morph now, and for those of you that don't know the character, I need to say this, that uh, you know, he, he looks a bit like this, but he, but he has a face, but, but there's only one of him, right? Because the whole joke of the film you're about to see depends on everyone being surprised that there's two of him. Which if you know the series, you are surprised. But if you don't know the series, you're not surprised. So it, there's, there, are, there are two boxes and two morphs, and this never happens normally. Voy a enseñaros a Move ahora, y para los que no la hayáis visto, eh, os vais a sorprender porque eh, toda la... Toda la película reside la idea de que solo existe uno, de, o sea, que solo hay un original, cuando en, re, en realidad hay dos. Ok.
so I wasn't meant to spend too long in the past. So one last journey into the pa past. Um, uh, having started Morph, having started a, uh, an animation company who specialised in this thing, working with modelling clay, we, were, we met a young student in 1984 uh, at the National Film School in London uh, who came to join us. Uh, and his name was Nick Park, uh, and it turns out he was like the great genius of, of animation of his generation. I had promised that I would not introduce much in the past, but just a simple last voyage to the past. When I had started Morph, the character, and I had started Armand, in 1994, in the National Film School in London, we met Nick Park, who has turned out to be the great genius of animation of his generation. So I'll just show you a clip from his, the best bit of his best film. Así que os voy a enseñar un clip de su mejor película. What's happening? <laughs> so that's that. That that is Nick Parks, the wrong trousers, and uh, we could talk for an hour about that film, I'm sure, but we can't. Um, just. Uh, just to say that that sequence that you saw was storyboarded by Nick exactly as it appears on the, on the screen at the end. Um, and it was, it was storyboarded very early on. Uh, so he, before he even knew what the story of the film was, I think, he, he, he'd storyboarded that sequence because he knew he wanted to do it. And he has just a... He has an instinct for comedy... And, a, and a, a very substantial in instinct for filmmaking that makes that such a great sequence. We have seen the sequence of Nick Park for the story of the wrong trousers. I could talk for hours about it, but I would like to say that it's a work that is quite late and in which it shows the instinct that Nick has for comedy and also for the vision cinematographic. And it's what makes this sequence a sequence that, well, from the sequence of the film, it's so potent. What is wrong trousers in Spanish? The wrong trousers. Excellent. Thank you.
because pantalones is a great word. So, uh, <laughs> but so is trouser. Trouser is a good word too. But uh, the title was Los Tecno Pantalones. Oh, okay, cool. Uh, yeah, well, that's fine. That's not bad. That's not bad. Um, okay, so. Um, I got distracted. There. So, th so uh, you know, fantastic film. But now I am going to move to the present day quite deliberately. So, that, so there we were, joined in 1984 by a young filmmaker that turned out to be incredibly important to us, uh, and working with, and discovering, and working with new young directors continues to be uh, very, very important. Pues ahí uh, voy a moverme hacia el futuro y estamos en el año 1994 trabajando con un director absolutamente importante para nosotros y descubriendo y trabajando también con, con directores muy talentosos con los que seguimos trabajando. And as well as different instincts for storytelling, you know, the new generation have other interests as well. And um, one of them, of course, is, is video gaming. Uh, I freely admit that is not my interest at all. I, I barely understand it. But, um, but, but the young people that we employ are, of course, totally into it uh, and have been working hard for a long time to get the chance to, to be involved in, in making a game. Eh, esos directores con los que trabajamos tienen diferentes inter intereses um, a la hora de contar historias. Eh, uno de los grandes intereses que tienen son los videojuegos. Uh, yo reconozco que personalmente no es una cuestión que me interese, eh, que me interese mucho, pero sí es verdad que nos queremos, o sea, que, que es una cosa que como estudio queremos introducirnos. We worked with a company in France called Digixar and um, a director there called Johan, I can't remember his other name, uh, and, but, and the whole project was funded by Bandai Namco, uh, and between us we made a, uh, a, this game, which is called 1111, uh, and although you'll, you'll see it set in the First World War, but it is not in any sense a shoot -em up game, it is a, it's a story, absolutely a story and a drama in game form. Estamos con una compañía francesa que se llama Direct Art, eh, cuyo director es Joan y del apellido no me acuerdo. Esta... Financiada. So Bandai, Bandai Namco. Bandai yeah. Namco. Y hemos hecho esta película que, que, vamos a, que voy a enseñar ahora. Es, es, un drama sobre, o sea, es un drama histórico y es un drama sobre la guerra. Cool. So I'll, I'll show you the, the trailer. Oh, that's. A, I'm sorry, that's a small surprise there. A good surprise. Yeah. No. There's that. Okay. Just a minor fuck up, but I'm not worried, um, because that's good. Uh, so instead of showing you that trailer which you can see anywhere. Uh, I, I, I was going to show you the, um, the film that inspired it, OK? So imagine the game. It, it <laughs> now it's working. Now it's working. <laughs> the first time you see someone die, everything shuts down. You're left with thoughts that go round and round. Every man has his demons. I did what any father would do. And I would make the same choices again. I followed orders. 
I, I won't attempt to explain something that I don't understand, but um, <coughs> you could see the, the artistic challenge was to try to bring sort of a painting to life. That was the idea. Um, and some moments work superbly well, I think, and some just look slightly weird. It was, it was a, a big challenge, but, but a very exciting one. So this guy, Johan in France, and uh, two people, particularly in Bristol, one called Bram, Bram Thweem, and one called George Rowe, and they worked together in Bristol and in France together and p to put together this t terrific game. Ah, bueno, la historia que es, es un videojuego, pero lo, lo que ha dicho antes de, de poner el clip, que ha, es, es una historia sobre un drama de la Primera Guerra Mundial contada en formato de videojuego. Ha sido un reto artístico bastante grande, él no va a intentar explicar una cosa que no entiende, pero bueno, ha sido un, un trabajo conjunto entre este Joan en, en Francia y Bronson y George uh, Rowe en Bristol. Yep. Uh, but as I said before, um, the it was sort of derived from a film that, that we'd made um, in Bristol. A chap called Darren Dubicki had made a film uh, which was actually a, a commercial for the Imperial War Museum in London. Uh, and um, the work that he did, the work that Darren did, the director of this film, uh, inspired 11.11. So I'm, I'm, it's a lovely looking thing and I'm very proud of it. Um. <laughs> well, we'll 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 done we'll video. Vamos a ver el video. Oh, that's the Este es el anuncio, que se, es un anuncio que hicimos en Arman para el Museo Imperial de la Guerra en Londres y fue lo que inspiró el videojuego 11111. I'm very happy with that. So, you know, I'm, what I never wanted was a lot of directors to all try to work in the same style that was, that, and animators to work in the same style. Um, I was always in, interested in this having diversity in the, in the style uh, in the style of performance, um, direction and animation. Eh, como veis tiene un look totalmente diferente a lo que la gente espera de Arman pero precisamente lo que no queríamos que era que la gente copiase nuestro estilo sino que queríamos precisamente animar a que hubiera una diversidad en todo, desde la dirección la animación, el arte But um, they were both uh, computer projects obviously and we're not very well known for that uh, so I wanted to jump now 
I want to take a series of violent jumps uh, and uh, show you something completely different. Um, a, it's a station ident for one of the BBC networks called BBC Two, and the ident is simply a two. And most of the people who did these idents, almost all of them, except us, used um, CG uh, animation. Um, I'm sorry, I must, I must just stop and say, it's, very, very, it's extremely confusing for me that people doing computer animation call it 3D. Because, I mean, I mean that's 3D. <laughs> that's 3D. Uh, so I think they're doing... They're doing so I'll call it CG, CGI. Um, <laughs> where was I? Oh, yes. almost, almost everyone else did, did um, CGI, but uh, we had this young director, a guy called Gavin Strange, who's a very, very talented fellow, uh, and I'll, sh I'll show you a sort of making of his station ident. Ok, no somos precisamente muy conocidos por la animación por ordenador, así que voy a ir dando una serie de saltos y voy a hablar de un identificativo que hicimos para la BBC2, una careta, y en el que casi todos usaron ordenador. Eh, dicho esto, es muy confuso porque ¿qué es el 3D, para nosotros el 3D precisamente es esto. Eh, entonces hablaré de CGI para la animación de, de ordenador porque para mí el 3D sigue siendo, eh, sigue siendo la animación en volumen. Eh, entonces lo que voy, ahora voy a enseñar un making of del, del identificativo que hizo para el BBC2 uno de nuestros directores que se llama Gavin Strange. So it's not it's not exactly instructional, but it does. Um, but it looks like they're having fun, and I and, and and I do think that's that is important. I think it's very it's, it is actually part of the company philosophy that you know that work should be fun. You know, ideally it can't always be, but but it should be. And if you're enjoying yourself when you're having fun, as those people clearly were, you know, great stuff comes from that. Bueno, no es muy instructivo, pero sí que se ve que se lo están pasando, que se lo están pasando bien y es una cosa muy importante para Arman y nuestra filosofía precisamente es que el trabajo debe ser eh, divertido y si se lo están pasando bien, seguramente también lo transmitirán a los espectadores. So we've seen there um, the work from three or four completely different people, each pursuing their own interest. And now I'm going to show you another one, something different again. Hemos visto tres cuatro trabajos de gente que trabaja de maneras muy distintas y entonces ahora os voy a enseñar. And this is, I would say, um, uh, a classic short film. I don't, well, I don't mean it's, I don't mean it will, it will survive for all time. I don't mean that. I mean it's, it's, it, there's a style of comedy with short films um, which involves um, invention, timing, comedy, uh, and that's. Uh, and this film, which is called, I know what it's called, it's called, um, I don't know what it's called, ye gods, I don't know what it's called. <laughs> Remote, thank you, it's called Remote. And it, so it was made by two guys in, in the CG department. Uh, 
between jobs. So they are on staff the whole time. Most of their lives they spend making TV commercials. But when, there's, when it goes quiet, they get to work on their own project. And, and this is one such a one. Bueno, el, el corto que vais a ver a continuación es un corto clásico en el sentido de su estilo de, de comedia, de la invención, del timing. Eh, se titula Remote y es de, es de dos directores que trabajan en nuestro, sobre todo en nuestro departamento de comerciales, de anuncios, pero que en su tiempo libre hicieron esta película en animación por ordenador. Okay, uh, so now for another violent change of mood, um, I'm going to show you a film by a uh, a young uh, female director called Orsa Dusanda. I'm just going to show you a clip. Uh, it, it was a, the commission was a music video for Coldplay um, and Orsa did a lovely design, beautiful designs uh, and a beautiful storyboard uh, and in the time it wasn't possible to animate it traditionally, so w she chose to do it as a, largely as a puppet shoot. So it's, uh, well, I'll, you'll, you'll see. Eh, y ahora en otro cambio violento, eh, vamos a, voy a enseñar una película dirigida por Oso Lusanda. Es un encargo, es un video musical, un videoclip para Coldplay. Y los diseños, el storyboard lo hizo, lo hizo ella, es precioso. Y como no había tiempo para hacerlo en stop motion, lo hicimos con marionetas rodadas. synopsis of the story. It's an atmospheric journey following a girl's fragmented memories about her dad. We see a girl on a turbulent sea drifting to the unknown. I wanted to use this turbulent sea as sort of a canvas to inject memories to capture the emotions the girl was having. 
with puppetry is is almost like an orchestra of, of different elements that you need to all work together and uh, we're obviously filming live action so we're on the mercy of um, sort of synchronization between the puppeteers and, and their acting skills throughout the puppet and also you need to be aware of all the rods and all the shadows and everything else and um, capturing those emotions that you were after and all this needs to really happen in, in one take when it does happen, it's incredibly useful, and I feel also that the whole crew is very aware of when the take is successful. It's really hard to choose which part is my favourite. Some of the underwater scenes, because that's where you really felt the, the sort of floatiness of the puppet, and it was very believable when we put the water effects on and, and all the other 2D elements as well. All these elements combined really work together. So that was very satisfying to see. So a, combi a combination of puppetry, <laughs> puppetry, drawn animation, uh, compositing, digital effects, uh, making something you know very very beautiful and and actually very moving. Es una combinación de marionetas, dibujo, composición. Eh, y efectos digitales haciendo una, un, al final una obra eh, muy bonita, preciosa. And now for something which is neither beautiful nor moving, um, just, just ridiculous, um, something funny again. Uh, working, there's a guy that works for us, not all the time, his name is Richard Weber, uh, and he has uh, an impossible to define sense of comedy which um, is just unique to him he, 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 there's a thing he does uh, and he created these characters called purple and brown and they, they, they exemplify a, a, a mysterious and strange form of humour Bueno, y ahora lo que vais a ver no es bonito, es ridículo, pero es muy divertido y lo ha hecho Richard Weber, que tiene un sentido de la comedia eh, muy difícil de definir, es único, es muy suyo y lo que vais a ver es un, unos personajes que se llaman Purple and Brown. Two idiots in the wilderness. Uh, it's kind of like waiting for Godot, isn't it, really, but with um, plasticine. Um, so the next thing, I've lost it already. The next thing. Oh, yes, OK. So that was Rich Weber. Um, another a young filmmaker came to us. Um, a guy with great, great talent, I, and I hope he'll soon get to make his own TV series, because he should do. His name is Will Studd, uh, and he came along at the time when we were asked by Nokia, the phone makers, to, to demonstrate the super um, macro camera that they have on their phone some time ago, I must say. Uh, and so, so the challenge was to make the, the smallest stop-motion film possible. 
Bueno, el siguiente es de un joven cineasta, de un gran talento que espero que algún día tenga su propia serie. Se llama Will Start y vino en el momento en que Nokia nos había pedido que demostráramos eh, su cámara con un, con un macro. Okay, so this is called Dot. Y se llama Punto. That's how tiny it was. And uh, up there you can see some of the puppets. The, the little girl was a, about that big, I think, and um, she was created with uh, 3D printing. Mm -hmm. La, la chica protagonista era muy chiquitina y se creó con una impresora 3D. Y bueno, ahí podéis ver algunos de los, de los personajes para demostrar esta cámara de Nokia, este macro. So that, um, the whole point of that film was it be very, very tiny. So now I want to jump to something very large. Uh, something isn't, is not particularly new, but um, which I just want to share with you. Because um, we make feature films, so that it, it couldn't be more different. And when we make feature films, we have a, a very large studio, and that's, it's a huge studio. It's divided up into smaller studios, <coughs> but some of them are themselves quite large. And in every studio, when you visit it, you, you pull aside a, a black curtain, and inside you see beautiful things. You see beautiful models beautiful sets and puppets, beautifully lit. It is, it's a magical world, a magical world, and, I like, and I'm very proud of it, and I like to show it off. Eh, bueno, y de lo pequeño quiero saltar a algo muy grande. Como sabéis, hacemos largometrajes y tenemos un estudio enorme que está dividido en estudios más pequeños y, cada, y en, estos de cada, en cada uno de estos pequeños estudios, tras esas cortinas negras que separan unos eh, de los otros, hay mundos mágicos, hay mundos increíbles. Okay. I would say, I would say that the, um, the editor, when he put this together, He'd clearly been drinking coffee all day, and, and so it's quite fast. Bueno, quien montó esto seguramente había estado bebiendo demasiado café, por lo que el montaje es muy picado.
Thank you. Thank you. Uh, so now I'm going to show you some slides, which are, which are this time perfectly related. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So so that the pirates film was now about I don't know seven or eight years ago. I can't remember. This is the most recent uh, film that we made, and I've just got some some slides here to show you some of the processes that go into it. Bueno, muchas gracias. Ahora eh, os voy a enseñar unas diapositivas. Eh, Piratas, que es la película que habéis visto el, el making, es de hace 7 o 8 años aproximadamente, pero esta película es la más eh, reciente y ahora os voy a enseñar también el proceso. Ok, ok. So, um, so I, I can sort of talk through these. So, um, our, our sheep um, came from a TV series uh, and became very popular and we decided to expand his adventures into a longer form. El personaje surge de una serie de televisión y queríamos expandirlo a más aventuras. Uh, and the first uh, and most boring part of the process not to look at is, is people sitting around in the room thinking about it and thinking what on earth is the story to be. Sí, y lo más aburrido es esta primera parte de ver, vamos, que es eh, sentados en una habitación pensando en ideas. The, the big drawing tells you that we decided to make it a sort of science fiction story with an alien. Bueno, la, el dibujo ya os enseña que queríamos hacer una historia de ciencia ficción con un marciano, con un extraterrestre. And there's a stage, a lo, there's a lovely fun stage where uh, writers directors, story artists, just play around when, it, when anything is possible. It's a lovely stage. Sí, este momento es el momento precioso, el mejor momento, más divertido, donde, donde los escritores, donde los dibujantes se, se reúnen para, bueno, pues para soltar ideas. Eventually, when the, when the story is developed, we, we need to write a script. Y cuando la historia está desarrollada, pues escribes el guión. <laughs> Uh, uh, and then we start storyboarding. Y luego pues hacemos el storyboard. And again, the, in fact, one of the, one of these artists is I don't know which one. Is a guy called Luis, uh, a Spanish story artist, extremely good. Y uno de ellos es español que ha hecho una parte de este storyboard que es Luis uh, Zamora Apoyo. But in the, in the storyboarding stage, you you take um, what's in the script and you you elaborate it. Uh, you focus it uh, and you add comedy. Sí, y en el storyboard entonces pues lo lo elaboras y es también donde creas la comedia. Then um, we do scenes, individual paintings, digital paintings to uh, where we we work out the aesthetics uh, and the and the color of the whole film. Sí, y entonces luego hacemos eh, pinturas para, para idear el color en la película. And the, as you can see, it's, it's very clear, we knew it, it was going to be a, a film with science fiction film, um, and we knew we had to have an alien. And we knew from very early on, from day one, we knew that um, Sean lives on a farm and he would be visited from, by an alien. Bueno, sabíamos que ya que era una película de ciencia ficción, que habría una protagonista extraterrestre y, y desde el día uno sabíamos también pues, que Shaun, la oveja, iba a ser visitada por este extraterrestre. But what the alien like was, uh, ya, pero pero la, el aspecto del marciano pues, era lo que todavía no sabíamos cómo iba a ser. Everything from fantastically cute to totally terrifying. <laughs> sí, algo desde algo muy grande o algo que diera mucho miedo. Uh, in fact, the, the original idea, I can tell you, was that the alien that came to visit was, was very cute mm -hmm. uh, until she became angry. Uh, the, the, and then kind of like the Incredible Hulk, she, she turned into a terrifying monster. And this was, I think, because the writer had a young child at the time. 
Bueno, la idea original es que el personaje fuera muy mono, pero entonces cuando se enfadaba se, construye, se convertía en un monstruo terrorífico y seguramente es porque el escritor tenía un bebé, tenía un niño pequeño. Um, but it, after a long time we settled on, on a fairly simple shape actually and it, the picture in the middle in color points out the kind of the the meta joke that it resembles a uh, a spaceship taking off and that became the same shape as our as our alien eh, sí, y tras un largo tiempo pues vinimos con esta, acabamos con esta forma tan sencilla que es como un metachiste porque en realidad pues tiene la forma como de un platillo volante y de, y de, la, y de su luz. Y nosotros refinamos el carácter, experimentamos con el color. Lo refinamos, experimentamos con el color. Y luego en tres dimensiones. Y luego pues vamos a las tres dimensiones. Um, you can see the in the the ones in the middle, the, the pale ones at the top, uh, are like um, three-dimensional sketch, sketches uh, when you're still trying to work out what the design is. And in fact, we have a, a terrifying collection of aliens that were created to develop the character. Lo que veis en medio más clarito son unos bocetos, pero ya hechos en, en 3D con volumen y acabamos con una colección bastante grande de, de algunos incluso terroríficos. Then um, you can't really see here, but she, but the, the final model who I have in this box. Oh, mm. y el, el modelo final lo tengo en esta caja. Bit of anticipation. But, uh, the, uh, The final model um, is largely uh, silicon and the, the head is largely clay. And inside, she's very technical. Uh, and here, here's a, a film of, of um, Jimmy assembling her. Bueno, el modelo es de, es de silicona, pero también tiene partes de plastilina y dentro es muy técnico. Aquí está Jimmy montándolo. Es la cabeza, lo que es de plastilina. Yes. See, and now is the moment I say, and she's right here. <laughs> y ahora es el momento en que digo, y ella está aquí. And, and she's pretty cute. She's, Ay, sí, she's muy mona. Yeah. So, and, uh, so, um, as Carolina rightly said, she has a, the, the head is mostly clay, um, the ears are silicon, uh, and she talks, it's odd actually, because in Shaun the Sheep, nobody articulates, they just make grunts and bleats and sounds, Uh, and the humans just go, oh, oh, oh. but um, uh, she uh, she articulates more than anybody else. But she articulates in an alien language, so uh, we have to build a series of mouths. Entonces, ella habla porque eh, los que habéis visto la serie en la oveja Shaun, la oveja yeah. Shaun no 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 habla, solamente articula algunos algunos sonidos y precisamente este personaje es la que la que la que habla aunque es lenguaje marciano pero tiene que mover y tiene que expresar. You, you can't really see but the model makers are so clever that in fact there is a line across across her face. Uh, and and the mouth the whole mouth comes away and then is replaced by a new one. Mm, bueno, es por eh, funciona por reemplazo porque los los que han hecho los model makers, los que han hecho mm, los modelos eh, le hacen una, una línea, cortan, digamos, la, la marioneta, de manera que el, diferentes bocas se pueden ir colocando en el mismo sitio para hacer este lipsing. So then she, she's built, and then we experiment with, make, with making her move. Bueno, ya está construida, así que ahora vamos a experimentar a ver cómo se mueve. <laughs> uh, 
actually, usually the animators start again. She has no legs, uh, so she doesn't walk as such. And normally the animators, the first thing they do is they make the character walk. Let's work out how the character walks, they say, which sounds like such a fundamental issue, but it's, it's actually completely irrelevant because in a film, nobody ever just walks. They always walk it means something or it's, or it's dramatic or they're carrying something or, you know so in fact all that work to find out the character's style of walking uh, is, is wasted normalmente los animadores prueban un personaje diciendo venga y ahora vamos a ver cómo anda aunque luego resulta ser irrelevante totalmente en la película porque es muy difícil que un personaje solamente ande normalmente anda y hace otras cosas más Because it was um, a science fiction film, uh, a lot of the, the internal references are to uh, classic science fiction movies from, from the 50s and so on. Uh, and we noticed that the, 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 all those films take place in the American Midwest somewhere. Uh, and so we took our very English farmhouse... Uh, and and sort of reimagine the countryside to these great big swaying fields of corn. Bueno, y como era una película de ficción, muchas de nuestras referencias eran de los años 50, películas clásicas rodadas en el medio oeste americano. Y lo que hicimos fue tomar nuestro eh, nuestro paisaje inglés y, y convertirlo. Are we okay for time? <laughs> okay, all right. Okay, uh, seriously, how not. Do I need to like ten minutes? Ten minutes, okay, okay, okay. I can do that. I can do that. <laughs> I can do that. Uh, um, <laughs> okay. Uh, oh yes. Okay. So this is this is people working on the set again. That back to that idea of the behind the scenes. These people are dressing the set. Están, están vistiendo el set, el decorado, aquí está la, la gente trabajando. Yes, as I say, a, a magical world. Es un mundo mágico. And so, I, because I, I love it so much, here is just some pictures of the one of the really big sets that we made. It's unusually large. Eh, me encanta, bueno, sobre todo este set que es inusualmente grande. Es un set muy grande. And that gives you a sense of the scale. Fijaros en la escala. When the animator was working, he or she had to. Every, every frame had to climb up here and here and here and walk onto the set and walk to the back to, to animate the characters at the back. So, eh, os podéis imaginar que cuando un animador o animadora tiene que animar, tiene que subir esas escaleras, entrar en el decorado, ir al rincón que haya que animar, mover, la, mover un frame y volver a bajar hasta el siguiente frame. Filmarlo y otra vez así. Uh, I once went to um, Pixar in um, California and I gave, I gave a talk there and I was feeling in a mischievous mood. So I said, um, you know, I have great respect for what you do, but it must be so boring. <laughs> <laughs> Because they spend all their time working at computers. And as you've seen, our business is physical. You know, the, the animators and the set dressers are working with things. People are cutting wood and cutting steel, uh, painting building with plaster and resin, uh, cl climbing, working with, working with real light, working with real cameras. It's a wonderfully uh, active business. Estuve en Pixar en California dando una charla, una conferencia y entonces en un momento dado me les dije os compadezco, debe ser tan aburrido vuestro trabajo todo el día trabajando con ordenadores porque en realidad en nuestra compañía pues es todo muy físico, ¿no? Cortamos, pintamos, construimos con resina, con diferentes materiales. And very, 
I'm going to move on quickly um, to something quite different. Just while we were making the film, no, 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 sorry, no. While we were making the film, we, we did watch um, some sort of classic silent comedies. Mientras hacíamos la película, pues mirábamos algunas películas clásicas de, de, de comedias. In this case, Buster, Buster Keaton. Buster Keaton. <laughs> I mean, apart from apart from all the all the men falling over, there's two great gags in there. You know, when when he lifts up the box and Buster stands up, and they both look. Underneath, that's a fantastic gag, and and then that thing with the car at the end is quite brilliant. Bueno, y a, además de las de los hombres cayéndose, hay hay momentos mm, buenísimos como cuando levanta la la caja y, y, el, lo del, y el gag del coche. I'm just zooming to the end here. Yeah. Okay, so um, let's see, let's see. Ahora un zoom hacia el final. I'm just not zooming to the end. Oh, here we are. Oh, no, I'm not going to say that. No. No. Animator on the set. Aquí en el decorado. Animator on the set. Every, every frame he had to climb up onto the set and, and get intimately involved. Para cada fotograma hay que subir al decorado. Volver a bajar, subir. And this is um, a special effect shot. Not, not all films now seem to have special effects in them. Um, you can just about see that we that we did we did it for real. Like we didn't do it with a computer. We made all those things that are flying around. And we hung them up on rods and animated them, as you see, animated them moving around. Um, it is true. It is true that animators like to suffer uh, a bit, uh, and they like to they like to show off and do the most difficult and awkward thing possible. Eh, bueno, aquí veis los efectos especiales que son reales, son objetos reales ahí colgando y bueno lo hicimos de esta manera porque en realidad a los animales, a los animadores, perdón, le, eh, nos gusta sufrir. And that's that's the sort of number of people that you need to make a an animated feature film. Y esta es el el tipo de gente, el equipo que se necesita para hacer un largometraje. Now I'm going to move on again. I'm not not see that. Nope. 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 Um, just a just a comment on the uh, a comment on the economy of the of the company that um, as well as making films. Um, Live attractions is part of the is part of the economy as well. Uh, we're, we're quite small in that world, but we've we've got Denmark, Australia, uh, Japan, uh, England, Korea. So uh, there's a Sean all, all over the world. Um, un comentario acerca de la empresa. También hacemos atracciones como para parques temáticos en Dinamarca. Somos pequeños, pero estamos en Dinamarca, en Australia, en Japón, en Corea. I think this is a Japanese uh, Shaun the Sheep themed restaurant. <laughs> es la oveja Shaun en un en un restaurante temático en Japón. And you can quite literally buy a, a Shaun burger. <laughs> a Shaun, sorry. Shaun burger. Burger. <laughs> and then, and then, um, there are other things we do in the company that are nothing to do with filmmaking at all. I suppose. Um, Twenty-five years ago, we were approached by the. Um, a charity who were raising money to build a new children's hospital in Bristol. And they came to us and they wanted some characters to be the face of the campaign. <coughs> they wanted a, a logo, really. And it's very difficult to think of a character 
from out of nowhere, that would have no context. So after some discussion, we said, would it not be easier just to use Wallace and Gromit? And that's what we, what we agreed to do. Um, bueno, hacemos otras cosas que no, de hecho, no tienen nada que ver con, con la cinematografía. Hace 20 años, 25 años nos contactó, nos contactó Charity, que sería Caridad, perdón, ONG, una ONG eh, que querían personajes para su, para su campaña. Y, y entonces, pues bueno, después de pensarlo mucho, dijimos, bueno, ¿por qué no usamos unos que ya, que ya, están, que ya están creados, que son Wallace y Gromit? So the charity became known as uh, Wallace and Gromit's Grand Appeal. And I must stress that um, we don't do much work. It's the charity does the work, um, and, but we, we contribute creatively. But it is kind of wonderful because o over that 25 years, they, between us, as a partnership, we've raised uh, 70 million pounds for the Children's hosp Hospital. Bueno, y es, eh, es alucinante porque este Wallace and Gromit Grand Appeal, que se, que se llama, eh, ha conseguido, ellos hacen un trabajo muy duro eh, y, y nosotros ponemos la parte artística, pero es maravilloso porque en estos 25 años se han conseguido 70, 70, 70, million, 70, million. 70 millones de libras para, para este hospital infantil en Bristol. It's the, obviously, it's the sort of thing that we, we never imagined when it was, you know, two schoolboys with a 16mm Bolex. We never dreamt that this kind of thing would, might follow. Es el tipo de cosas que nunca soñamos cuando éramos dos chicos con nuestra Bolex con 17 años. <laughs> That was just him. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Now I really am jumping all around the place. When an animation director wants to, to um, wants a performance from an animator, it's a very slow process because it takes it takes many hours to produce that performance. And you can't, as a director, you can't say, do it like this. Oh, no, that wasn't so good. Do it again like this. You can't afford that luxury. So as a result, the director tries to give the animators all the information they need before they start. Uh, and one way we do this is, as directors is we record ourselves on video and then show that to the animator. No estoy saltando de una cosa a otra, pero os quería contar, cuando un director de animación quiere una actuación específica de un animador, esto se toma muchísimas horas, entonces no podemos ir haciendo prueba-error, sino que eh, muchas veces una de las herramientas es que el director nos filmamos con esa actuación que queremos que el animador de alguna manera reproduzca. So we'll see that in action. Así que vamos a ver eso. En acción. Yes, and so we, as a result, we have excellent footage to blackmail all our <laughs> all directors. Así que, como resultado, tenemos un montón de metraje para para hacer chantaje. Uh, Eighteen months ago, um, 
Dave and I, who'd owned the company from the start, um, moved the ownership to the workforce. So now it's owned by the employees. It's a system which is quite, um, well, slightly popular in England. It's a, it's a fairly new concept, really. It's called employee ownership. Um, and it means that instead of being owned by two people, it's owned by a trust. And everyone that works there is a member of the trust. Uh, and it seems a very fair thing to do, but it seems fair for the people involved and from our point of view, we just love the company and we didn't want to see it compromised or we didn't want to see it um, exploited, actually. And if you, if you sell your company in a conventional way into, the, into uh, some big media empire, you make more money that way, that's for sure. But then you lose control, uh, you lose independence uh, and... We didn't want we didn't want to see that happen to our company. We didn't we didn't want our company to be a just a thing to be bought and sold by other people. Hace 18 meses Dave y yo, los propietarios de Arman Animation, eh, quisimos eh, quisimos vender. Quisimos, quisimos pasar la, la propiedad a, nuestra, a nuestros trabajadores. Sí, sí, pasar la propiedad a los empleados a través de una fundación. Entonces, entonces esa, esa, nos pareció que era la cosa, lo más correcto. Eh, nos parecía que era hacer lo correcto eh, porque amamos nuestra compañía y porque que no queríamos verla explotada. Y, no, y, y por supuesto que se podía haber vendido a un imperio... Eh, eh, a, a otras compañías mayores, pero con eso hubiéramos perdido el control y la, y la independencia. Entonces nos pareció lo, lo correcto hacer. No es algo, es algo, no es algo tradicionalmente muy común. Ahora en Inglaterra hay, hay algunas compañías que empiezan a hacerlo, el pasarlo a sus trabajadores, a, en este caso a, a, a sus artistas. Okay, and and um, that's a, that I'm very proud of that. It's a it's a it's a great thing. Um, I'm very happy with that uh, and good so, and uh, now I'll leave you I'll leave you laughing <laughs> with something uh, something very silly indeed bueno estoy muy orgulloso de esto y ahora os voy a dejar eh, riendo un ratito con algo un poco mm, tonto <laughs> So that's by a very, a very mad man indeed, um, called Tom Parkinson, uh, who I'm glad to say he, he made that for us some years ago, then he went away to America, 
I'm happy he's come back to do more loony, crazy things. So I think that's it. Uh, I, I didn't quite finish my demonstration, but um, it, it does... Sh this is, is nearly uh, a viable animation puppet, so it, it's quite simple, really. I mean, yeah, if I had a bit more time, I wasn't doing this at the same time. You know, um, you, it's, it's a working animation puppet, and, uh, uh, and it shows that animation is accessible. I, I love to show the big studio pictures and, and, and think, whoa, it's all so complicated and amazing, but actually, at its heart, is something wonderfully simple. Eh, bueno, habéis visto, no la he acabado, pero más o menos esto es una marioneta que es viable, que se puede animar y aunque habéis visto ejemplos de largometrajes y de producciones muchísimo más complejas, también en el centro, en el corazón de, de la animación está la posibilidad de animar con algo mucho más sencillo. So, that's it. That's Ahí it. Está. <laughs>